Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! So this will be the final video for the calculations for suspensions. So for those of you who don't know, I already put out two videos. One giving you the introduction to suspensions and it gives you that baseline knowledge that you do require. So make sure you check that out. And two, I went through the first part of the calculations. So I gave five examples. So five prescriptions with several questions that we went through. So this will be the final part. I'm going to include the link to those videos in the description. So make sure to check it out. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So these are some assumptions that I want you to make for these calculations. I don't want some genius commenting on this video talking about, oh, you can't make this medication into a suspension, blah, blah, blah. Okay, just make these assumptions. And the one that's very important is the third bullet. Neglect the weight of the powder inside the suspension unless specified. Now, this is something that I kind of wanted to clarify from the first video with the suspension calculations. So the first five questions or prescriptions that I went over. Um, what you would notice is that there were several times where, let's say you had to make a 100 ml suspension, but then I said that you should put it in a 100 ml bottle, right? Now, the mistake is that you actually need space in the bottle when you make suspensions because remember, you have to shake the suspension and to make sure that the medication inside disperses effectively, that's why you always need a little bit of room, okay? So like I have here, if the script wants 100 ml, you wanna use a 120 ml bottle so that you have that extra room to shake it. So Rx number six, they have the ingredients here for you, and then this is what's available in the pharmacy. So let's jump right into the questions. So determine how much of each ingredient is required for this prescription. So lidocaine viscous, um, now as per the Rx, is 2.5 ml per 10 ml. So that's the concentration. And based on the directions, the total volume of the suspension that you need to make is 90 ml. So all you have to do is set up a proportion in this case, and you should find out that you need 22.5 ml of lidocaine viscous 2%. For the Maalox, you follow the same procedure. You set up a proportion, solve for 90 ml. You should get 45 ml of Maalox required. For the Benadryl, as per the Rx, is 30 milligrams per 10 ml. Now you wanna solve for 90 ml and you will find out that you need 270 milligrams of Benadryl active ingredient required. Now the Benadryl comes as 25 milligram capsules. So if you divide it, you should get 10.8 capsules or 11 whole capsules. Each capsule weighs 30 milligrams. And since we need 10.8 capsules to get the active ingredient of 270 milligrams, you multiply and the answer should be 324 milligrams of Benadryl, right? Powder required. Okay, so that's your answer right there. So here's the compounding procedure for Rx number six. So if you watch the previous video and you did the calculations, everything that we are going through today in this video should be straightforward, okay? So I'm not going to be spending too much time on anything unless it's required. So in this one, you have several ingredients, right? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna pre-calibrate, you wanna get the powder, right? So you wanna empty the capsules of the Benadryl onto a weighing paper, get the amount that you need, you wanna triturate it and then add a small amount of cherry syrup to wet the powder. You pour this mixture into the pre-calibrated bottle and then you add the other ingredients, right? So the lidocaine and the Maalox and then you QS with your cherry syrup to 90 ml. For Rx number seven, you have a patient getting tetracycline suspension and according to the direction, 375 milligrams three times a day for 21 doses. This is what's available in the pharmacy. Question number one, how many ml of suspension should be compounded? Now, as per the prescription, 375 milligrams equals to five ml, right? Equals to one teaspoon. So the direction is saying 375 or 
one teaspoon or five ml three times a day for 21 doses this part be very careful it's 21 doses not for 21 days so don't make that mistake right so you simply take the 5 ml and you multiply it by 21 and you should get 105 total of suspension that needs to be compounded what weight of powder will supply the amount of tetracycline required for this prescription so once again, 375 milligrams, three times a day for 21 doses, you should get 78, 75 milligrams. Now, according to what's available in the pharmacy, tetracycline is supplied as 500 milligrams per capsule. You do the math, you should get 15.75 capsules. Each capsule weighs 600 milligrams. So if you multiply, you should get 9450 milligrams weight of powder of the tetracycline is required. And you have the compounding procedure here for your information. Rx number eight, we have a patient getting spironolactone, suspension. We have these ingredients here available in the pharmacy. Question number one, determine how many whole tablets of spironolactone is required. According to the prescription, five milligrams per ml, right? As you can see here, the Prescription is requesting 120 ml, so the active spironolactone in the whole Rx will be 600 milligrams, right? You just set up a proportion, solve for 120 ml, you should get 600 milligrams. In the pharmacy, spironolactone comes as 50 milligram tablets. If you divide, you should get 12 tablets or 12 whole tablets required for this prescription. How much methylcellulose powder is needed? So the prescription said that we need 2%. Now, this is something that I already discussed in the previous video. So whenever you have, let's say X percent, right? And the X in this case will always be the number. It's always a concentration, like I mentioned. So the X is always in grams, and then it's always gonna be over 100 ml. So in this case, it's going to be two grams over 100 ml or two grams per 100 ml, and that's the concentration. But the Rx is asking for 120 ml, right? Not 100 ml. So you set up a proportion and you should get 2,400 milligrams of the methicellulose powder that is needed in the prescription. And here is the compounding procedure for your information. Rx number nine, we have a patient getting metoclopramide and this is what's available in the pharmacy. And here we have the density of the metoclopramide because according to the questions, right? So if you look at question number two, how much cherry syrup is required? So, so far we've been just QSing the cherry syrup, right? We add the powder and then we QS the cherry syrup to the required amount of the suspension. So we have not been determining how much cherry syrup is actually in the bottle, right? We just QS to let's say 120 ml, 90 ml, and that's it, okay? But in this case, we have to figure out how much we actually added. So number one, determine how many whole capsules of metoclopramide is required. Now, as per the prescription, it's one milligram per kilogram per dose. If you do the math, you should get 88.63 milligrams per dose. And according to the direction, one dose twice a day for five days. So a total of 10 doses. If you multiply that, you should get 886.3 milligrams required. And if you divide that by 20 milligrams per capsule, you should get 44.31 capsules. You round up for whole capsules, you should get 45. How much cherry syrup is required? Now to determine this, we must know the weight and volume, right? That the metoclopramide will occupy in the bottle. So that's why they gave us the density, right? And the density is two, and the unit of density is grams over ml. So in this case, the density is two grams per ml. Now each metoclopramide capsule has a total of 50 milligrams powder. And from what we did in question one, we need 44.31 capsules to get 886.3 milligrams of the total active tetracycline for the whole prescription. So 44.31 capsule multiplied by the weight of the capsule, you should get 2215.5 milligrams of tetracycline powder. And the density is two grams per ml. You set up a proportion, you should get 1.10 ml of tetracycline. 
And if you look at the direction, we are making 50 ml of the suspension. So if you subtract the weight and volume of the tetracycline from the 50 ml suspension, you should get 48.9 ml, and that would be the amount of cherry syrup required. We have a patient getting a suspension that's composed of other suspensions. So we have drug A, drug B, drug C, and then we have a powder, which is drug D. So we're going to be making a six days supply, and here is the directions. So let's go right into the questions. Determine how much of each ingredient is required for this prescription. Now, as per the prescription, we need to make 180 ml suspension. Now, to find out how many ml is three parts, right? So that's what drug A is saying here, right? They have the parts next to each other. In order to do this, we need the total parts of the prescription, right? So drug A, three parts. Drug B and drug C, it says AA, right? So it says AA, two parts. Whenever you see that, right, it always means that of each, right? So AA means of each, and then the two parts mean two parts of each drug B and also drug C, right? The way it's listed. So drug B doesn't have anything next to it. And then drug C, it says of each two parts. So that means drug B gets two parts, drug C gets two parts. Please keep this in mind. This is something that you will definitely see when you take this exam. Whether you're doing suspensions, capsules, ointments, they could use the same concept. So we have a total of seven parts, right? So a total of seven parts will give us 180 ml suspension. So now we wanna solve for the parts, okay? And the reason why we didn't include drug D is because it's a powder. And remember what I said, the weight of the powder is negligible unless I specify. So in this case, you're basically assuming that you need seven parts or you're saying that 180 ml suspension has seven parts. And now you have to solve for the parts required. So seven parts per 180 ml. How many ml for three parts? 77.14 ml. Drug B, once again, seven parts and 180 ml. So solve for two parts, you get 51.42 ml. And same for drug C. Now for drug D, it gives us the percentage, right? That concentration percentage that I discussed in the previous question. So 3% simply means three grams and 100 ml. We wanna solve for 180 ml, we should get 5.4 grams. So you wanna pre-calibrate a bottle to 180 ml. You weigh out the powder, right? So drug D in this case, you place it in a glass mortar. You triturate the powder until fine particles you measure out the um, required amount of drug A, B, and C that you need, right? So you could just measure it and just keep it to the side. So in this case, you wanna assume that you could use either drug A, B, or C to wet the powder, simply because it's suspensions, right? Drug A, B, or C are supplied as suspensions. So they have that viscous kind of texture that you could use to wet the powder, so it's okay. And then you wanna pour the mixture into the pre-calibrated bottle and then add the rest of the ingredients and then you label it. So that will be the end of this video. So this will be the completion to the suspensions calculations series. So once again, it's three videos. Make sure to check all of them out. And guys, please leave comments. And I really love it when I'm able to help you guys out, right? I love it when I'm able to explain it in such a way that you're able to understand. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, always, always feel free to reach out to me and connect with me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.